Watch on the Rhine uh, is set in Washington DC in July of 1940 uh, and we're actually in one room throughout the, the whole show. It's a living room of a, of a mansion, of, uh, of a house belonging to a Farelli family. So we've got this European family arriving uh, in US and this clash of cultures. What was quite important for me to capture was that difference. So tonally, um, stylistically and also um, in terms of fabrics. I love working with period costume. I think everybody does. It's always exciting to look back at a time in history and just sort of really see it. And I think especially with, with costume, it really shows a period. Like when you look at it, you really get a, a, a big sense of where you are in time just by how the people look so I think it's, al it's always fun. What, what we imagine is like 1930s, 1940s we have a very clear idea of what these um, periods and styles look like but the truth is that we're just in between and, and you know there is this really fine balance of going from 30s to 40s. What you're going to get is with the older characters is they're going to be very much in the earlier period of clothing, they're going to look much more Victorian because that's what they grew up with, that's what they know, that's going to be their style. And then you're going to get those younger characters coming in who are exploring new fashions and are excited by the things that they're seeing. And you'll be, really be able to see different generations very clearly cut within the costumes. What's been one of the, no, one of the kind of main notes I've had to myself is make sure that the actors are not looking like they're wearing costumes. They need to look very natural and they need to look like they're wearing clothes rather than our costumed bodies on stage. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we're not just doing a period drama play, but there is a bit more layer into it. There is a bit more depth into it. So I guess the idea of this TV shape and I guess watching news documentaries and archives from 1940s has kind of led me into um, an idea of how about we are looking at this thing in a two-dimensional way and then it breaks through and it becomes much more closer to the audience and much more kind of closer to the room. In the process of looking and sourcing the items we, we are trying to make sure that you know a, a lot of these items are sort of sustainable so we're looking for a lot of um, costume stores, um, a lot of vintage shops as well uh, so we're not actually having any pieces made or not really using new pieces except of shoes and maybe a few other items. Sustainability probably starts straight away um, when, when we're thinking about costume it's very it's very specific about what, what things we can reuse and what things we can't obviously for hygiene reasons and different sized people and things like that so it's very much a question of are we buying are we hiring what are we doing to just make sure that we're we're saving as much as possible and we're not we're not using stuff that can't be used again. I guess it takes a bit more time but it also means that we're not wasting any material um, and as much as I sort of have a lot of respect for costume making and and the craft of costume making um, I do feel like nowadays um, you know basically it's just the best to use what, what's already, what, what is existing already. So at the Dommel we have our own store and we also use all the different hire houses that exist sort of in the UK. So we've got the National Theatre, there's Angels, there's Bristol and we also have a good working relationship with a lot of the other theatres in London and we love to, to share. Specifically for, for Watch on the Rhine we are using the National Theatre to hire. So in the wardrobe department we have outside freelancers who come in and put the show together and what we do is we support them and we help them with the alterations in particular and with higher stuff so that it can be reused and that it can be used again and again and again when you alter stuff you're not cutting it you're not reducing it in size or anything like that you are if you need to make it shorter or make it smaller or add bits in you're keeping the this costume looking the same at all times so you're hiding those bits of fabric inside so that they can be used again at a later date and the costume stores um, that we've been through have so many amazing resources and so many amazing pieces already that it is my job to make sure we use the best out of them um, and the best of the stuff that I think is suitable for the characters.